So I grew up in my neighborhood. We didn't have a lot of diversity in my neighborhood. Diversity is always people's talking about it. And we didn't have it. You know, my neighborhood was poor black, poor white. That was our neighborhood, you know. So I didn't feel any white privilege. I know some people had it, man, you know. I knew some motherfuckers with sweaters. <laughs> but I was two tank tops in the winter, okay? <laughs> and I just didn't feel it, you know. I wish I'd have had some white privilege, dude. Sign me up. But I didn't have it, man. It was just poor black kids, poor white kids, man. And my poor black friends would always be like, man, look what you did to us. And I'm like, dude, do you think I would do all that shit to y'all and then move right next door, bro? <laughs> now, we gonna split this plum or not, dog? <laughs> We're in this together, man. It was hectic sometimes. Fighting with black kids is tough. I don't know if you ever fought a bunch of black dudes, but they win. They win, dude. Dude, I got jumped one time after a football game by five black dudes. I don't know if you ever fought five black dudes at night. <laughs> Just imagine you're fighting five black dudes, right? Now close your eyes. <laughs> now how many black dudes are you fighting? As many as your imagination can hold. And, it, and white kids are horrible too, man. It was just, in, in poverty, it's just, that's what's going on, man. And if you're a black guy and you feel like that's racially insensitive, then imagine you're fighting five white dudes in a cloud. <laughs> like, damn, this cloud is aggressive. <laughs> and accurate. Poor black, poor white. That was my name. So I didn't have any white privilege, man. Uh, I mean, I knew some motherfuckers with sweaters. But I was two tank tops in the winter, you feel me? Okay? So if it was available, I missed the sign-ups, you know? And my black friends would always get pissed, man. They'd be like, man, look what you did to us. Look at all the shit you did to us. I'm like, dude, do you think I would do all that shit and move right next door? Are we gonna split this plum or not? We're fucking down here together, man. You think I took all your shit and now don't have it? <laughs> we need to get together and chase wealthier white people, man. <laughs> being poor sucks, man. I don't care what color you are, being poor sucks. Uh, fighting. Poor people like to fight. You poor, yeah, I'm poor too. Let's fucking fight. <laughs> you know? Fighting black dudes is tough, man. I don't know if you ever fought a black dude or not, but they win. <laughs> they win, bro. If you haven't, I'll watch you try. They win, man. I got jumped once by five black dudes at night. I don't know if you ever fought five black dudes at night, but. <laughs> Imagine you're fighting five black dudes. Now close your eyes. Now how many black dudes are you fighting? Many as your imagination can hold. And it's the same the other way. If you're a black guy, imagine you're fighting five white dudes in a cloud. But this cloud is ours. Yeah, but everybody thinks the only other, other, other colors, you have to have some color to be, you know, poor and have to struggle, man. It's hard. We're going to college, you're trying to go to college, you're poor and white. There's no program specifically for poor white people. Name one, dude. I will wait. <laughs> Nothing, man. I remember going to the financial aid office. She said, you got to be black. You got to be Latino, uh, Native American, Pacific Islander, fucking surfers. <laughs> The surfers are getting this money? We're landlocked, lady. I had a beautiful lady, beautiful black lady worked in our financial aid office, Miss Linda. She said, well, come back when you're black. <laughs> What's the password, Linda? 
said, go talk to the basketball coach. I said, he ain't making black kids. Those kids were black when they went to him. He's not that good of a coach. <laughs> and I don't argue, man. I don't argue with black women. You can. I'll watch you try. They're smart, man. They're cunning. They're crafty. They switch angles. They're like Jews that can fight. That's hilarious, dude. We had a dude in our town. Uh, this boy named Thundercat. Yeah, TJ was his name. Yeah, I don't know what the J stood for, but... When the T stands for Thundercat, who gives a fuck what the J stands for? Who <laughs> while you're behind, you little wildflower, you know? And uh, he was born with some deficiencies. Um, he had extra salivary glands in his face, you know? So when he would get to smiling or feeling real joyous, he would spray out the sides of his mouth. So he had to keep a cloth on, you know, dry him up at the corners of his mouth. And that's friendship. Unfortunately, uh, the devil got him twice. Yeah, because he had hair growing directly out of his face, you know? Just, you know? Much hair as you could think of, just, you know? Man, y'all ain't thinking about enough fucking hair, dude, okay? I can feel when people are thinking about the right amount of hair. And I ain't feeling that shit right now. The sisters used to cornrow his cheeks in the summer. Give him a little bit of relief from the heat. And they used to cut out around his eyes for the holidays so he could see his gifts, okay? <laughs> so that much hair. And somebody one day yelled out, he's gonna die! And they said that in church. And in a small town, that's, that's a fucking doctor's opinion, you know? <laughs> so this boy Thunder, dude, Thunder got to quit school at 11 so he could die at home. Yeah, because you can't die at school, bro. They don't want the, all of that shit, you know? They say they're all about equality and everything, but they don't want you fucking dying on the premises. And, uh, and he got to quit school, right? His parents let him smoke so he could live a little bit while he was dying. So he'd be in a fucking yard just blowing Winston's. And they bought him a truck, dude, a man's truck, an adult man's truck, a Ford Ranger, okay? It was the first one that they had, like a little bitty man's truck, right? It looked like there was a really a tougher man in the distance with a remote control controlling it. And they welded it, dude, to a pole in his front yard. They fucking welded this truck, a real truck, to a fucking real pole cemented into the ground. And he could drive as fast as he wanted in his fucking yard, dude. And it was about, probably just about five feet between him and the pole, dude. So he would just be in a tight spiral, bro. Just doing like 70 miles an hour, bro. Just fucking blowing winds, this baby. Just, just listening to Fuji's and Blind Melon, baby. Just no rain, baby. Just no rain. And he never did die, dude. He's 35 years old now. So they just got bad information on him, praise God. And, uh, yeah, and his mother, she, uh, she had varicose veins in her neck, and they both, they blew out, and she died. Yeah. And the daddy, this is how they made money. The daddy used to do slip and falls at Pizza Hut's. <laughs> and this is back when Pizza Hut was flexing, bro, you know? <laughs> Dude, he used to do slip and falls at Pizza Hut's and he would sue him and get that money. And he was working the circuit one year and uh, in the southeast region and he died, dude. He fucking split his head open on a salad bar outside of Sarasota. So that family fucking dies, dude. We be dying. They fucking die. So. But yeah, man, I'll never forget that shit, man. Just watching that dude drive around in a fucking circle in his yard. Crazy. And the truck started digging a hole into the fucking yard, dude. So he was... He, the, our irony was he was probably nine feet under. 